when you go from running in traditional shoes, most, most traditionally built shoes are anywhere between 12 millimeters and up to 22 millimeters higher in the heel than the forefoot. That's a half inch to an inch higher in your heel than your forefoot. So your calf contracts, it gets tight, and you don't even realize it. It just gets shortened, and everything's contracted. And then you come down to a level platform. I take away your half inch or your inch. You have to, you have to like elongate that and stretch it out. And that's the process of adaptation. You know, whereas, you know, for instance, if you had a tall and Mari Indians here, I, you know, I mean, you know, you read Born to Run, and a lot of you guys maybe read Born to Run. So I ran in those races at Leadville where where the Tom Mar ran. You know, he didn't. And uh, I ran those races. And the opposite of what we're saying in here today, they ran in no shoes, but the first year they forced them to run in shoes. Yeah. And I passed every one of them at 13 miles. And I urged them to throw their shoes away because they had blisters and abnormal problems with their feet because they weren't used to being confined. That's the story he didn't tell. So, likewise, so if you come from being barefoot your whole life and you put shoes on, you're probably going to get some problems. We've been wearing these high-heeled products and we're trying to go more minimalist. We're going to have some problems unless you take it easy. When you look at it, history, too, of just shoes in general, I mean, they just differentiated shoes between right and left in the 1800s. <laughs> That's you know, right. You know, we're not talking, yeah. we're not talking the, like a massive history to the cavemen ages kind of thing. We're just talking recent stuff. I mean, we're talking, you know, 1960s and 70s when they started adding the shoe. It's really recent. So now we're really getting back to a little bit maybe more of what we've been doing for a very long time, like you were saying, too, Jamie. I mean, it's been, you know. It can be funny. I had a woman a couple of years ago when I was first getting into this, and she probably weighed 90 pounds, mm -hmm. and she looked like your ideal runner, and she had plantar fasciitis, and she had these big gunboats she was running in, and I was trying to talk to her about, I just read Born to Run, you know, you're, you're heel striking, you're, you're probably not going to, unless you find a different shoe, you're not going to get away from the heel strike, and consequently, you're just going to keep landing where it hurts, and I had her come out in the hallway of our office and just take her shoes off and walk up and down the hall. And, and she had had this problem for like two years, and I don't think she ever stepped foot out of her bed without shoes on. And she's like, oh, this is so weird. I don't know what this... <laughs> it, was, it was funny and sad all at once. I guess. <laughs> you laughed and then you cried. <laughs> <coughs> Chris and I were just talking about our kids. I mean, you watch, if you, if you have kids or have had kids, and you watch yeah. them run around the backyard barefoot, it's perfect. It's perfect. They're, they're perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to watch as they get older and they start wearing shoes. And I took them school shopping this year, and uh, they don't make minimalist shoes for kids. But it's kind of become a trendy thing. They have, like, pumas with, like, you know, uh, and uh, it's it's interesting. My kids hate built-up shoes. They just refuse to wear them. And don't worry. The kids' shoes are coming. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's, it's funny. I coach the – I assistant coach my son's soccer team, and – and, uh, no, cleats. You know, no, I just took them all out. I, I had them start the whole season this year in barefoot shoes, and I'm sure the parents all think I'm crazy. But I'm like, we're, we're starting this in your bare feet, people, and then we'll, we'll get up and do your warm-up, and we're going to do some touching. I mean, that's, you're going to get a better feel for the ball even if you're running around in your bare feet, and that's what we did on the field and tried to make sure that they washed their feet at the end of the day. Kind of thing. <laughs> but they loved it. Oh, so it was great. It. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, that's great. You know, I, you know, of course, you know, um, a, as a parent, you know, when you have kids, uh, they just they just run and run and run and run and run all day, right? You remember? Yeah. We used to do that too. <laughs> uh, but just, you know, never ran out of energy, right? Because they were falling. They they did. They weren't pushing. They weren't really using that much energy. They're falling forward. You know. So. If you're doing that all day properly, you really don't get tired. You can run all day if you do it properly. You won't get tired. Danny, I want my kids to get tired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going back to. That's what I'm going back to. And as a parent, you go, going, dear Lord, please let them rest because I am so exhausted, right? So, but they don't get tired. It's of many things, metabolism. But number one, it looks like they're just sprinting around all day, but it's no effort or, or very little effort. We, we've just made it very difficult 
we, we view running as that we get addicted to it. All you guys are here for a reason. You want to learn about this stuff. You know, I've run 100 miles in a day, and that's just, you know, it's not that easy. You know, it's not yeah. that <laughs> but, but running in general is not, it's not a hard thing if we totally relax. We've made it this no pain, no gain proposition. And we've made it this do or die proposition. That's why you're working against yourself. You have to totally relax. Because I, I work with a lot of Kenyan runners. I've had the privilege to run with a lot of world-class athletes. So I, and I'll do this with my best Kenyan voice. So a friend of mine, Charles, I go, Charles, when you think about running five-minute pace for a marathon, <coughs> What do you think about? Danny, I think about relaxing. <laughs> I think I must be relaxed. Because if I don't, then I can't run so fast. <laughs> right? Because it's if you tense up, your muscles are tense, or you have a mental tenseness about, I'm going to go out there and do this today. You know, running angry or whatever. There's been articles on that before. That's total BS. you got to run relaxed. <laughs> got to run with Why don't we do it? We went to stress reliever. If you're injured and you're, you're PO'd and, you know, all this is just another stress in your life, give it up. Go play golf. Go do something else. Right? That's so, yeah, that's stressful too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I go play golf. I just try to get everybody just, it's okay. It's just a game. It's just a stupid game. <laughs> it's not complicated. Okay, I'm sorry. I no, that's all right.